These are the 10 places you need to visit in Jeju Island. Before we continue with the video, don't forget to subscribe and gently smash the like button. Sanji Lighthouse is located at Sarabang Park in Jeju City, which is the most famous park among residents in Jeju Island. You cannot miss a white lighthouse where you can see the entire view of Jeju Port. It is Sanji Lighthouse where you can also see a picturesque sight of the coastal cliffs and the ocean. It is an ideal place to grab your afternoon cup of coffee. Next to the lighthouse there's a cafe. You can drink a coffee. You can sit here and enjoy this view. If you sit down you only see the sea and the horizon. On the opposite side of the city from Sanji Lighthouse is Iho Tebu Beach that is one of the most popular spots for photographers, travelers, locals, and pretty much everyone. It is most famous for its red and white pony lighthouses which can be seen on many photos. The beach is popular among surfers and campers as there is a decent sized camping ground just next to the beach. But it's really nice to finally be in a beach, we've seen the sea so many times but we still haven't had the chance to actually put our feet into the sand and see the sea so close. This must visit site for all tourists is located at Sokipo area, consisting of three waterfalls of which two flow all year long. Our recommendation is to visit the first two as the third one is far apart and the way there is full of stairs going up and down. Between the second and third waterfalls, you will be able to see So Nim Kyo Arch Bridge. This impressive bridge, together with the pavilion on the other side, provides spectacular views over the sea and the Hala Mountain. If you have food with you, then this is a great picnic spot. The entry to the waterfalls is only 2,500 won, and if you come with a car, then there is a big parking lot next to the entrance. The first waterfall you can see when it's raining a lot and then this one is all year long and also why we're so lucky right now there's no one around us because we are here in Jeju right now off season so this is the beginning of May and the season usually is either in, during Korean holidays when there's uh, long weekends people come here or summer because there's a lot of resorts you can go to the beach and then these are the times usually this is full of people but right now it's in months of April beginning of May so it's one of the best times to travel Kayong is happy so she's dancing Sangumburi crater has been designated as a natural monument it is located on the southeast side of Jeju and is a flat crater about 650 meters wide and 100 meters deep if you look at the crater from above, it looks like a man-made circular stadium. What makes this crater unique is the fact that a private owner owns this land. And who wouldn't want to own a huge crater? The entry costs 6,000 won, which is a little bit pricey, but the views on the other hand are priceless. Sangumpuri crater changes a lot based on the seasons. It is lush green during the summer months and turns cold by the waves of Silvercrest in autumn. They also have a gift shop at a small cafe on the, at the entrance. So when you do your circle and it's a cold day, it's definitely a good place to come, stroll, get some warm to drink, heat, and then move on. Songak Mountain Coastal Path is a scenic trail surrounded by the sea. The wall distance is about 2.8 kilometers long and takes two hours to finish but there are so many breathtaking views making you wish the trail be longer. One of my recommendation is to bring a hat because the combination of the sun and the reflection from the sea might make the path quite harsh. If you come with kids, they can enjoy horse riding that are scattered in the beginning of the path. The path hides a dark past in Korea's history. Looking along at the jagged coastline, one can spot the large man-made caves built during the Japanese occupation. One of the trains you can see behind me is the place where at the end of the war when the Japanese were losing the war, they committed suicide. There were more than 60 of these kind of trenches built 
around this area and there are also some other trenches around here that kept the uh, anti-aircraft guns information for you in Jeju there are a lot of tourists and this is one of the tourist area so finding a parking spot here is a nightmare there is a designated parking spot but it's just so full just to keep in mind if you come here early you, it's easy when you come here afternoon like we right now it's uh, 2 p.m yeah this place is full of cars there's so many of them here so keep this in mind the Yongmori coast or dragon head coast got its name because the beach looks like a dragon that is jumping into the ocean with its head raised the entry to the coast is 2001 Yongmori is a sandstone bed created by layers of sand that have been deposited for tens of millions of years the scenery is stunning as you have the sandstone on one side and the sea on the other if you happen to be hungry there you can meet the woman sea divers of Jeju who sell sea cucumbers and stroll on the road that spreads along the seashore if you're not into cockroaches then this place <laughs> is not for you you have so many sea cockroaches running around crawling around if you don't know Sagwang Tea Garden then you probably have heard of the name Osolok the Sagwang organic tea garden is known as the most well managed and largest tea plantation in Korea. The area was originally infertile and ridden with stones but Osolok spent 20 years transforming the barren land into a land that is rich and fertile and in making it the biggest organic tea field in Korea. Today the garden and its vicinity as a whole has become one of Jeju's flagship landmark with Osolok Tea Museum and Innisfree Osolok on the premise. The entry to the fields is free but the parking is difficult due to heavy traffic and high popularity. Osolok is the most famous green tea brand in Korea. They have huge tea plantation tea fields here in Jeju Island. And also look itself means the origin of green tea. This mighty creation of nature is gorgeous and the only one in East Asia that falls into the sea. That reason alone is worth the visit as this is a special sight to be seen. The entry to the waterfalls is only 2001 and can be accessed quickly from Sogipo city. If you come with a car then no need to worry as there is plenty of room for parking. It is really busy here, everybody is taking photos, everybody is enjoying. The emerald sea and the volcanic rocks are what you can see on the breathtaking promenade that starts from Evol Cafe Street. After you had a delicious cake in one of the many cafes in the area, take a stroll down the beach which is considered one of the most beautiful ones in the whole of Jeju. You can notice surf lessons taking place and then why not dipping your feet into the beautiful transparent sea yourself. Orum is a rising small defunct volcano in the Jeju island of South Korea. There are many around and some of them can be climbed. The climb to the top is not the easiest but if you want to enjoy great views and take memorable photos then why not try at least one. The view here is amazing, you can see the Hala mountain, you can see the sea. Yeah, so if you're on the top there is a sign that shows the name of the place and also where you are you can see everybody's taking photos but yeah the view here is freaking amazing yeah.